Good evening, friend. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. You mustn't mind that covered body over there in the corner. That's Oscar, our bashful corpse. You see, we covered him up because Oscar said he didn't want to be seen dead in here. <laughs> and those folks sitting on the coffins just came in to rest their bones. Sort of a skeleton crew, you know. Oh, we're having a big party here tonight, but if you don't see any smiles, just remember, all the people here are grave characters. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Corpse Without a Conscience, was written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan, and stars Carl Swenson in the role of Charles, with Everett Sloan as Bellini. As they so often say, the line that separates the dead from the living is very thin. Now take tonight's character, Mario Bellini. Bellini crossed that line so many times he almost wore it out. Like the strange mystic man that Mario Bellini was in life, the small mosque-shaped tomb in which his body reposed was strange and mystic too. In the hillside cemetery, it stood alone and aloof above the other tomb. On a stormy, windswept night in the large granite house whose grounds border on the graveyard, the elderly, wrinkled-faced woman stands at her bedroom window, staring out at the hilltop tomb. The elderly woman, troubled by a hidden fear, bites nervously at her lip. Then, suddenly... Ah! Ah! Ananda! Ananda, what happened? Charles. Charles. Well, what happened? Why did you scream? He, he's come back. He's returned from... Huh? What, what are you trying to say? Who's come back? Mario Bellini. Bellini? Yes, he was here in this room. It's ridiculous, Bellini. He's dead. He's buried in that tomb up on the hill. I know, but he's returned from the dead. Nonsense. The dead can't return. Bellini can. He has strange powers. He was here in my room. Can't you tell he was here? Well, how? That odd incense he always had burning in his place. Don't you smell it? This room, it's filled with the odor of Bellini's incense. It's just your nerves. There's no odor of incense in this room. What? Not a trace of it. Now go back to bed. You think I'm crazy. Just because I'm old, you think I imagine things. Bellini is up on the hill in that tomb. His castle is in the crypt under the stone floor. Even if he could rise from the coffin, he'd be locked in that crypt. Not that the dead can rise. Bellini has strange powers. For your own peace of mind, I'm going to prove to you that Bellini's body still rests in that tomb. I'm going to wake up Horton, and he'll help me unseal that trap door on the stone floor. It's no use, Charles. You won't find Bellini there. What makes you so sure? Because of this note. What note is that? I received it from Bellini the day before his death. I never told anyone. Here. Read it. Mrs. Ferguson, you have won in life. I will win in death. I shall return for my victory on the first anniversary of my death. Bellini. You see, the prophecy in that note has been fulfilled. Mario Bellini died just one year ago tonight. <laughs> I want to go back to the house. After I show you what's below the floor of this tomb. It's pure witchcraft, Mrs. Ferguson, coming to life after being dead for a year. My aunt is upset enough, Horton, without your comments. I'm sorry, Mr. Ferguson. Just keep working on that concrete. Uh, yes, sir. Aunt Edna, you still haven't told me why Bellini sent you that note. I don't know. Are you sure? I told you, I don't know. Could it be because you swindled him? Swindled? 
I won't have you talking to me that way. Forgive me, forgive me, Aunt Edna. Swindle is a bad choice of a word, isn't it? It was a perfectly legal transaction. I obtained his property fair and open. Just a shrewd business, hmm? Well, I've always prided myself on my ability to deal shrewdly in all matters. How's it coming, Horton? You need any help? Uh, no, sir. As soon as I get this bolt loosened, it'll take the two of us to raise the door. It's solid stone, you know. I know, I know. Charles, perhaps we'd better call the police. You have nothing to worry about, I now. Except, of course, your own conscience. That's an ugly thing to say to me. I've given you everything you ever wanted, haven't I? Yes, you have, Aunt Edna. And I've often wondered why. Uh, there. It's off. The boat's free, Mr. Ferguson. I think we can raise the door now. All right, Horton, take hold of the ring. Yes, sir. Let's pull together. All right. Come on. It's beginning to lift, sir. That's it. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Let's open. What, what do we do now, sir? Mrs. Ferguson, you and I are going down there into the crypt. Oh, please, sir. Mr. Bellini always frightened me when he was alive. I'd rather Don't not... be a fool, Horton. The dead can do no harm. But Mrs. Ferguson said he came out to this crypt tonight. Never mind what Mrs. Ferguson said. You are doing as I say. Y yes, sir. Ready, Aunt Edna? Yes, Charles. If you insist... I'll but... take the lantern, Horton. Uh, here you are, sir. All right. Now, you two follow me down. Uh, watch out for your head, Mrs. Ferguson. The ceiling's low. Oh, please, Charles, hurry. Moving as fast as I can. Got to find the catch on the side of the casket. There, here it is. Now, pull back the panel, Horton. Yes, sir. Is, is it there, Charles? Of course it is there. Exactly as I said he would be. Hermetically sealed under glass. No. No sign of life, is there? No, no sign of life. Don't be afraid to look. But I... Go ahead. Look, 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 look. See for yourself. See how safe you are from the unrising, dead Mario Bellini. Oh. Thank heaven. He's there. And dead. <laughs> Charles, did you lock all the windows on the first floor? Yes, Aunt Edna. What about the shutters, Horton? I bolted them all, ma'am. Really, Aunt Edna, this is ridiculous. You saw his body still sealed in the casket? It's not his body. It's the spirit of him, his evil spirit. I know he'll try to kill me, but I'll fool him. I'll live through this night. Why, of course you will. I, um, uh, I was just thinking of what the doctor said about your heart, about overexciting yourself. Never mind my heart. Get out of here. Both of you. Yes, ma'am. Good night, Aunt Edna. Good night. And Horton, make sure to lock the door behind you. Yes, Mrs. Ferguson. If you need me, Aunt Edna, just call out. I'll be within hearing distance. Make sure that you are. No. Now, let's see. Is there anything I've overlooked? Yes, Mrs. Burke. <gasps> Your closet. Oh. Oh. Who said that? I did, Mrs. Ferguson. Turn around and you will see. No. Oh, no, it can't be. But it is. Mario Bellini. No, no, no. It's just in my mind. You're not really here at all. It's just my mind. You're in your casket where we left you. Am I? You're dead. I saw you in that casket. And I will return there after I settle with you. Oh, this is a trick. A trick to frighten an old lady. You're not really Mario Bellini. You can't be. You are going to die, Mrs. Ferguson. Oh, stay away from me. You are going to die for what you did to me in life. It was all legal. I, I, I can prove it. I am not bound by the law now, Mrs. Ferguson. I am taking you with me back to the grave. No. Please, stay away. Don't come near me. Your 
foolish old woman. Do you think I'm afraid of that knife in your hand? Do you think a knife can protect you from the dead? Don't come near me! Hey, no, let go! Oh, ah. She's been stabbed, sir. Horton, call Dr. Marshall. Yes, no. Wait. Bellini. What? Mario Bellini. Return from the grave. <gasps> Mrs. Ferguson. She's dead, Horton. She... She was trying to tell us something. What did she say about Bellini? I'm not sure, but it uh, it seemed as if she were trying to accuse him. Of stabbing her? Yes, but that uh, doesn't seem possible. Every entrance to this room was locked. Horton, look. Her hand on the knife as if she'd plunged it into herself. Well, Mrs. Ferguson wouldn't have killed herself, sir. And yet there was no way for anyone to get in here. Anyone alive. I, I don't know what to think now. Maybe my aunt knew what she was saying. Maybe she did. Horton, what are you staring at? Look, sir. This was on the floor. What is it? A ring, a gold ring with the initials M.B. engraved on it. I saw that ring tonight. I saw it on Mario Bellini's hand while he was in the casket in his tomb. <laughs> Just as we left it, sir. The stone trap door still open. The casket seems to be in place down there in the crypt. Yes, well, we'll uh, go down to make sure. Did, did you think it's safe, sir? Well, we've got to find out if this was the ring Bellini really had on his hand. Mr. Ferguson, the panel of the casket is open. Nothing to be afraid of. It's the way we left it. Let me have your lantern. Here you are, sir. Is, is he still in the casket underneath the glass? Yes, he's here. I guess we must have misunderstood what my aunt meant when she spoke his name. Of course, sir. Nobody can return from the grave. Good heavens, Mr. Ferguson, his hand, there's no ring on it. Mm -hmm. Look for yourself, it's gone, sir. There's no ring on his finger. Oh, yes, yes, no ring. But it's not possible. Are you sure you saw the ring on the corpse? Couldn't you be mistaken, I sir? guess I could be, but... Well, I guess I must be, because No, I... no, 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 you were right. Mrs. But... Ferguson was right, too. Mario Bellini did return from the dead to kill her. Horton, what are you talking about? Look! Look at the other hand. It's stained with blood, sir. I can't understand it. I can't understand how blood could be on his hand unless it was there when he was put into the casket. But it's fresh blood, sir. We must call the police immediately. Yes, I, I guess we'd better. We'll go just as soon as I pull the panel back over the top of the coffin. We'd better leave everything the way it is and, and hurry out of here. It may be dangerous for us to stay a moment longer. No, all right. Mr. Fuggs. Hmm? What is it? I, I, I thought I heard something stirring down there. Where? In the casket, sir. Listen. It's your imagination, Horton. No, there is something moving in that casket. Quick, let's get out of here. No, 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 wait. The glass, the casket. Bellini's getting up from his coffin. Get out of your mind. He's there, standing up in the casket, sir. Wait, where are you going? For the police. Come back, you fool. No, sir. You, Mr. Fergus. I had no choice, Horton. It was your life or mine. You. Uh... That was a foolish thing, Charles. Isn't one murder enough for tonight? What did you want me to do, Mario? Let him go to the police and have them find out that you're still alive? What difference does it make? They'll probably find out about me anyhow. It's a good chance they'd have, after the way you botched everything tonight. Why didn't you do what you were told instead of killing my aunt with a knife? The knife wasn't my idea. I had to kill her or she would have killed me. I wish she had. Would have fitted my plans better. You and your plans, making out a false certificate of my death, burying an empty casket and hiding me away for a year, all so I could scare your aunt to death. Ah, oh, what a plan. It would have worked if you had followed orders. I did as you ordered, but it did not work. The shock of seeing me wasn't enough for her. Her heart was a lot stronger than you thought it was. Well, then why don't you leave? Instead of stabbing her. Why? Because it was such a wonderful opportunity. 
I waited over a year for tonight. I waited long enough for my revenge. So now you may have to pay for your revenge. Then I will pay for it. It will be well worth the price. Well, not to me, it won't. I wanted her out of the way to inherit a fortune, not to go to the chair for it. <laughs> that is your problem. After all, Charles, I am officially dead, you know. Shut up, will you? Horton could have been my alibi. If you hadn't gotten blood on your hands and made him suspicious. Then why did you bring him back here? You know something had gone wrong. We found your ring. I had to prove that you were still in your grave, didn't I? All right. What are we going to do with his body? I was just thinking about that. And? Maybe I can save us yet. We'll put his fingerprints on that knife. And we'll make it look as if he had a fight with my aunt. Uh, it might work. It's the only thing we can do. I'll say there was an argument between them. And in the struggle, my aunt was stabbed and Horton was shot. What about this tomb? We close it up tight till the investigation's over. There's no reason for them to suspect that you are still alive. Yes, Lieutenant, the bodies were... Just where you found them. Uh, you didn't touch a thing, Mr. Ferguson. No, not a thing. My aunt was there on the floor near the bed, and Horton was only a few feet away. Uh, tell me, Mr. Ferguson, where were you when you heard the first shot fired? Downstairs in the library. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't hear anything of the argument that went before it? Didn't hear a thing. That's why I'm not sure they were arguing. Uh, all right. Well, I won't take up any more of your time tonight. Uh, I'll be back in the morning. Oh, very well, Lieutenant. Uh, uh, by the way... This window here faces the hillside cemetery, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, did you happen to notice anything strange going on out there about the time your aunt was killed? No. I told you I was in the library. Oh, oh yes, so you did. Uh, why do you uh, happen to mention the cemetery, Lieutenant? Oh, it probably has nothing to do with this case, but I had a call about an hour ago from a woman who said she saw a light out there. A uh, light? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Probably just a crank call. The woman insisted she saw two men coming out of a tomb. The one on the top of the hill, shaped like a mosque. The tomb they buried that queer duck in. His name was uh, Mario uh, Bellini. Mario Bellini. Oh, yes. Uh, I guess I'll have to investigate it sometime tomorrow after I make my report on this case. It's a trouble with being a cop. You get a hundred crazy calls like that a year. Now they're bum steers, but you got to see them through anyway. Yes. It must be quite a nuisance. Yeah, sure is. Well, good night, Mr. Ferguson. Good night, Inspector. Charles. Charles. What do you want, Mario? Is it all right to come in now? Give him a chance to get out of the house. He won't come back anymore. All right, all right. Come in. I heard what he said, Charles. Well, what about it? If the lieutenant goes to the tomb tomorrow, there will be trouble. Why do you say that? Are you crazy? That stone door to the crypt is chipped. The bolt has been broken. And there may be blood stains on the floor. Well, what if there are? There's no connection between me and Mario Bellini. Isn't there? What about the false death certificate? Don't you think they can eventually trace that back to you? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'm not going to wait to find out. I'm taking the first train out of here. And you had better do the same. Run away? What good would it do me without the inheritance? Where can I go? How can I live? That is your problem, not mine. I am dead, remember? No matter what happens now, I will be in the clear. Oh, that's right. If you go, you'll be in the clear. And if you stay, then I'll be in the clear. Uh, what do you mean? There's only one flaw in my story, Mario. The false death certificate. But uh, that uh, certificate doesn't have to be false. What? It doesn't really have to be false at all. If you're dead when they open that casket tomorrow, then my hands will be clean. Charles. Yes, that's the only way out. No, Charles, stay where you no, are. I can't let you live. You've got to die. No, Charles, wait. No, you've got to die, Melanie. I can live. Oh, Killing no. you is the only solution. <laughs> What a shame, Mario, that you can't help me lift this door. 
even with an iron lever. Too much for one man to open all the way. Ah. Ah, now it's coming. It's a little farther. I can prop it up enough for me to slide in. Not that. Now, now I can slide through. If I do it ever so carefully. Now, it's your turn, Bellini. I just pull you through the opening. Now I can carry you the rest of the way down. What the juice is caught on the top of that door. My, my hand, Charles. Bellini. My, my hand is on the door, Charles. It's not you talking. It's just my mind. It's just my nerves. You're dead. Am I? You're dead. You're dead. I killed you. In my own hand. You're dead. Your hand on that door is just a reflex. I'll get it loose. I'll get it loose even if I have to. Good heavens, the stone door. It dies. It slams shut. Now, now we are alone, Charles. You are trapped with me. In my tomb. You're dead. You can't talk. You're dead. You're dead. I'm, you. not, I'm not quite dead yet. You did not do your job well. I've got to get out of here. There's not enough air. You you can get out, Charles. Just push off the door. Of the door? Yes. This. Is it too heavy? Yeah. Of course, it's much too heavy for one man. But two men could. Oh, yes. Yes, two men could do it. Help me, help me, help me. Two men could push open this door. Yeah. Two normal men could. Yeah. But uh, I am half dead. I have no strength. Remember, you choked the strength out of me. <laughs> help! Help! I'm dying here. Somebody help me! <laughs> Shouting yeah. won't do you any good. No one can hear you through the stone. But you... you will have to stay here. With me until they find your body. No, I can't. I won't. I don't want to die. Oh, don't be such a coward, Charles. <laughs> Death is not so bad. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> and after all, we do have an elegant tomb in which to rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we mean when we say the guy died laughing. No sense of humor, that Mario Bellini just couldn't take a choke. <laughs> oh, well, I'll have to get along. Now, Bellini and I have a date with a couple of ghoulish girls. We're going out tonight to paint the town black. Oh, you didn't know that Bellini and I were pals. Why, of course. I've known that stiff ever since he stood knee-high to a grave hopper. <laughs> Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm. Inner Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for service men and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.